So now we're going to continue our discussion of clustering by talking about mixture models, in particular Gaussian mixture models. So k-means is great, but it doesn't handle oddly shaped clusters. It can only find circular clusters, because all of the distances are defined using Euclidean distance, which doesn't prefer one direction over another. So the way that we're going to deal with that is we're going to model our data. That is, for every cluster, we're going to learn a Gaussian distribution that explains what that cluster looks like. So for k-means, we had each cluster with a mean, which is why it's called k-means. Now we're going to have, in addition to a mean defining a normal distribution, we're also going to learn a variance. And that variance lets us capture properties of the data distribution that we couldn't with just a mean in k-means. And recall, the reason that we want to do this is we want to be able to solve problems like this, where you have a circular-shaped cluster, which we could capture with k-means, but we have the sausage-shaped cluster up here that we couldn't capture with k-means. We need to capture its variance, which is possible with a Gaussian distribution. There are multiple reasons why you might want to look at a mixture model. So in addition to being able to capture properties of the data, which we already talked about, it also now gives you a better way of talking about, say, how probable your data are. And this allows you to do a better job of selecting what k is. You can ask, what is the probability of my data under a clustering? And you can try out that for different values of k to select the number of clusters that you're actually going to see. And as a result, this makes it less sensitive to data scaling. If you double all of your coordinates by 2, your cluster shouldn't change that much. This makes it a little more robust to that. So recall the Gaussian distribution. The Gaussian distribution is defined by a mean and a variance. And so the mean corresponds where the center of the distribution lives, and the variance says how spread out it is. If we encode the variance as a matrix instead of just a single number, this allows the distribution to be spread out more in one direction than another direction. So, for example, when the mean is zero and the variance is this matrix here, this gives us a distribution that looks like this. When you look at the matrix, you can see that this number is quite a bit larger than the other. And what this is saying is that you're now going to have quite a bit more variance in one dimension, this, uh, along this ridge here than you do in the other directions. And so this is allowing you to capture this ridge-shaped distribution. When we model our data with a Gaussian mixture model, we have our data just as we had with k-means, and we're going to model each cluster with a mean and a variance. But how do we figure out what those means and variances are? To do that, we're going to simplify the model a little bit just to make it easier to explain what's going on, we'll relax these assumptions a little bit later. This makes it actually very similar to k-means, and once we figure out how to do it with a simple model, we'll go into the more complicated versions. So first, let's assume that we just have a variance matrix that is diagonal. That is, everything except the diagonal is zero, and we're also going to assume that all of the variances are the same. They're the, the same number. And we also know what that number is. And so this makes the problem very simple. And this makes it a lot like k-means. All that we've done is, instead of using a simple distance function, we're now going to use a Gaussian distribution, which turns out to be very, very similar. What we're going to do is going to start off with something very similar to k-means. We're going to randomly place our means somewhere in the data, and then we're going to assign each point to one of the clusters. And the way that we're going to assign points to a cluster is based on the likelihood. What is the probability of observing that point given that cluster's mean? And that's just a normal distribution. If you work through the math, you'll see a lot of this falls away. This is a constant. This is a constant, and this is a constant. So we'll just write this as proportional to this term here. And then all that we're really left with that doesn't depend on the sigma, which is assumed to be a constant, is 
this term here, which looks a lot like the distance function that we were computing before in k-means. And then after we assign points to a cluster, we're going to now recompute the mean in the standard way, add up all the numbers, divide by the number of points, and then we can recluster the data and then just keep doing that, iterating through like we did for k-means. So if we put k-means and Gaussian mixture model fit with this is called hard EM, side by side, you actually get very similar equations. The only difference is that you have a square root in k-means on the distance, and everything else is exactly the same. Now let's make this a little bit more complicated and actually use the power of the Gaussian distribution to encode the shape of the clusters. And, and that makes our life a little bit more difficult, but gives us more power. So, now we're still going to assume a diagonal matrix, but what's different is that each diagonal entry can be a different number. So this allows us to have different dimensions being more variable than other dimensions. So we can use the same algorithm where we use likelihood to assign points to clusters, and then we can recompute what the means and variances are using these equations. So let's see what that looks like in practice. We compute the likelihood for each point, and we get a likelihood for each cluster. We can then see which cluster is more likely for each of the points. We recompute the means and the variance to compute new clusters. And so here are the new clusters that we get as a result, and then it, we keep doing this until the clusters don't change and we have a new answer. So this concludes our discussion of clustering. Clustering allows you to find patterns in your data, and it connects back to some of the foundations that we talked about at the beginning of class in terms of probability distributions. Next time we're going to talk about clustering text documents, which are discrete data rather than the continuous data that we've been talking about before.